you guys, it is our first snowfall. Um, it is, what is today? November 22nd. I think they already have snow on the ground in Tallahassee, Florida. So y'all, something's going on. Look at my pretty thing. Might put that on my door. But anyway, guys, beautiful snow. Hey guys, welcome. I'm Tracy. This is my channel, Tracy from the Mermaid Cove, and it's snowing. I'm gonna say hi to Clara. Clara was looking at the snow, right, Clara? Clara. Yeah, we just had a little kerfuffle because Moira was downstairs and she was coming up, and Clara was near her, and yeah. So, but Clara, you know, um, she's eating. And I'm spoiling her because, you know, why do you have to watch your weight if you're at the end of your life? But y'all, thank you for your concerns. I just, so you know, I don't know. I don't have any answers. She seems to be better. She's not vomiting and um, she's hissing. But we do have a different cat in the house, a new cat. So that could have something to do with it. But around feeding time, she hides and hisses because that's when I was giving her the medicine. Even though I think we're on week two where I haven't done it. But her memory's long. And she's a Siamese cat, right? What more? I am Siamese, if you please. I am Siamese, if you don't please. So that's what's going on there. And I want to show you, I don't even know if I posted the other one, but I was giving away 20 tops. So I did 17. So I got this thing and I like it, but it's kind of flounces, kind of flounces out. And I'm just not going to wear it. It's already too big. Um, and due to stress, I've been losing some weight, but that just reminded me to take a pill, y'all. The pill management is a thing. And then this one I had gotten from Walmart and I'm just not gonna wear it much. So I might as well let somebody else use it. And this one I love, but it's way too big for me. And it's, um, isn't it gorgeous? And I would have to wear it with something over it. So if you have a cardiac, a cardiac, a cardigan or something on, just too much. So it's a gorgeous, isn't it? Anyway, I don't know. Maybe I could wear it to paint. I don't know. No, let it go. It's too beautiful. Somebody will love that thing. So anyway, that's going to round me up to 20. But, um, yeah. So, whew. Um, it's my day off. It's Friday. I am waiting for Giant. I um, have a pickup. They're running late. And I have to go to CVS. There's something that's not right about something. And I need to ask my doctor. And I need to have information. And you can't even get a person anymore at this particular one. So I'm just going to do the old-fashioned and go inside. There's a lot going on. And, um, yeah, my depression is, um, well... I feel like because having some medicine, even though it's not working as well as I would like it to work, I um, and a little of the depression lifted, but situational depression is a thing too, right? Just forget what the world and everyone I know is very depressed. Um, I mean, really, it's palpable. But I have some health stuff going on. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's a thing. So I started, I went to an orthopedic and started going for PT because my arm, you know, it was strained, like a tendonitis, tennis kind of thing, I guess. And we were working on it and um, I think it was like 20% better. But one day, maybe my Friday off, I was going to go to PT and I tripped on something and I grabbed myself, I was by the couch with this arm. And when I went to PT, I told him, I said, it, it doesn't really hurt. But he messed around with it and, and um, I didn't say much. I could tell the workout was different. And then when I came back Monday, I had another trainer and he was doing measurements and stuff. And, and then the other trainer came in, Tyler, and they think I've done something to it um, because the measurements they had before and now they're worse, right? So there's a huge, huge difference. So I got an appointment with my orthopedic. I had to go get an MRI. I went to the orthopedic, had to get an MRI, and then go back to the orthopedic. And then this place where I was getting an MRI, 
or like I made the mistake of saying, I don't have metal on my head, I have titanium. But I made a mistake of saying yes, and they're like, well, you have to go back, my brain surgery was in 2009, and get something from the doctor. I said, I actually have done an MRI since my surgery with the titanium at your place. So I'm gonna hunt down my doctor from 2009? No, I'll just cancel it and make an appointment at a new place. So anyway, I got that done. And this was just last Monday or Tuesday, no, Tuesday, I don't remember. Anyway, maybe for, I don't know. But I, um, the report, massive tear. And I think I blacked out a little bit. And he said, I can't even begin to discuss this with you. I'm not a shoulder specialist and you need a soldier, shoulder specialist. And, um, you know, you may need a shoulder replacement. You may need whatever. So I said, well, why am I not in complete? I mean, I'm uncomfortable. Y'all get me wrong. I'm just not sleeping well, which adds everything gets worse. But, you know, this shirt makes me look huge. <laughs> Maybe it needs to go in the pile. But, um, yeah. So I got I have an appointment this Tuesday coming up. And one of my friends is going to go with me because I sort of black out, like, um, but then I left without the report and I sent an email to somebody to get my report if I could have it as soon as possible so I can actually read it and ask some intelligent questions. So I am not rushing into any kind of surgery. Um, <coughs> I'm going to ask for maybe some drugs in case, you know, it starts to, you know, maybe be a little worse. But and I've changed the way I do things at work. So I'm just using this side, which is working out fine. I'm just slower. But, you know, I'm terrified. And it's not so much the actual, you know, my hair, y'all. I don't know. It's just hard to even put in a ponytail right now. So, I'm thinking about just going and getting cut short. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I'm a little terrified about it. And not the operation and that, but the recovery. You know, the not being able to use your arm for six to eight weeks, taking probably six months to completely heal. Um, but when you look at a totality of a life, right, what's six months or, you know, so yeah, but I'm going to get the information and I feel like I, I, like I need a new mattress. I can't be convalescent. So like stuff like that, there's just stuff I have to do. I'm in the mood to declutter and I have to be careful because I don't want to use this arm, but I can't use this arm. Well, he said, I can't, I can use it. I just can't lift it above my head, but I'm super careful with it. And, um, but yeah, I can't even, it hurts now to put my bra on. I mean, I've always been able to have range of motion in my back. I mean, I can do it. I don't think it's hurting it, but you know, yeah. So that's what I got going on there. And it's exhausting thinking about it. And now there's a tweak going on in my house. I, I can't figure out what alarm it is. The one on the top of the stairs usually has a problem. And, um, I don't know. It just sounds like it's moving, but then my hearing's not right. So, yeah. So, that's what's happening. And um, it's just crazy. So, I find out Tuesday, and then what I can do, I'd rather do some PT and get a strong, the parts that need to be stronger, strong, you know? So, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, but my brother is moving um, end of January. This is tickets. They sold their house. They're running back. They have their insurance paid for. They have everything clear with the State Department. So, you know, um, I think my sister-in-law retires in um, the end of the year. And then um, my brother sells his car and he's got a lot of bids on it. It's like one of those hardback Jeeps. So he's got some really good offers on it. So, you know, they are moving forward. But... I did do it in January. Um, he would be around to take me to doctor's appointments, being retired. Um, so yeah, and I, I'll have to check. I'm not gonna do anything yet until I talk to these people and think about it. But um, I have to check with my insurance and see, you know, if I have it where people can come and help me for a little bit, you know? Um, 
you know, and of course, I'm sure Joanna would take out trash and do dishes and stuff like that. Um, but it's just, you know, the bathing, the dressing. I mean, if I'm home for two weeks, but I'm probably going to have to go to PT. I'm going to have to go to the doctor. So I got to have a bra on, y'all. This is my big concern. I I just maybe put one on and have someone change it every couple weeks. I don't know. I don't, it sounds awful. But anyway, so these are just, I'm just trying to put out of my head and, um, yeah, so the energy is low, and I don't want to get out of bed, and I'm forcing myself. Um, like, right now, it's 1030, so I just vacuumed and um, got laundry going. Um, I'm doing it in smaller bites now, so I don't carry things. And, you know, if I'm carrying this, I don't want to grab my arm with that. So, I got, you know, I'm trying to think things out and be as smart as I can, but, you know, accidents happen. And part of that is my ADHD, right? And it's, it's, I would say I'm better, but I'm nowhere near where I am with the other medicine. It's very sad, sad, sad. So, um, yeah. <sighs> but anyway, that's the state of the union. I wanted to come here and just say, hey, my PT's working and things are going well. And I mean, I'm trying to, I think I told someone at work, like, you know, I, I hate to feel this way, but I feel like I can't catch a break. And she's like, it's okay. You can be negative and let it out. And, you know, I was like, but I hate it. I want to feel like a victim. And I, you know, so anyway, but the Clara thing is just the hardest, right? And I was ready to let her go. And then the vet really said, I think she has more time. And that's hard because I'm ready. And I feel like Clara's ready. And, you know, so and my vet's not trying to make money off me or anything. So she had three shots and, um, you know, her head is maybe better, but it's never ever really cleared up. It's like a seasonal thing. And then she's not vomiting. So obviously the anti-nausea medicine helps. She's eating like a horse and she's just, if I can afford the food, I'm going to pay for, I'm giving her what she wants. And, um, so I like to carry her up sometimes and have her in the room with me, but right now she hates it. And then I'm scared to carry her up. Right. Um, so and I don't think she likes to come up because Moira's there and yeah, so it's just a thing. It's a thing. Um, but I'm just, when I'm here and when she'll let me, I'm combing her and she wants to be petted and she doesn't want to be petted and it's just, you know, a cat, right? Try to make sense of a cat. And I did put out some Christmas stuff. So when I'm done, totally done, I wish I had now because like, oh, how's that going to get put away? And I'm like, don't worry about it. You can have Christmas up till July. It's not the end of the world. But yeah, so that's what's happening. And um, I'm trying to get back on track. I, I haven't really bought groceries in a while. I run in and buy things. And I'm really focusing on trying to eat healthier and walk and meditate and listen to good things and get myself strong. Um, but I'm going to make borscht today. And I got stuff. I got salmon and... I'm going to cook that and be like a snacking treat almost. So when I need, you know, I'm trying to have when I need, like yesterday I did not do well. Um, I wasn't prepared. And then we had a party and, um, you know, somebody that made amazing soup and some salads. So I tried to stick to that, but of course I had cake and then I wanted more cake and I cut a piece and I had it in my bag to come home and my water bottle opened and got ruined the cake. So universe helping me. So, yeah, so I got some groceries. I'll try to do a grocery haul. And um, really, other than I've got calls I don't want to make. But I'm going to CVS I'm going to deal with today. And because I have my therapist calling me. i got to look at that. And um, my, he's my drug guy. So, I don't know. We might have to try some different antidepressants. When's he calling me? Um, oh, 11.30. Okay. I thought, all right, well, I'm going to wait and do everything after that. And i got to remember when CVS closes for lunch. And, you know, anyway, it's just everyone, right? It's just a, the state of affairs feels just dire. And, um, but yeah, so that's what's happening. I mean, it's just normal drama at work and, you know, everyone's depressed. The customers are depressed. It's just like a low energy, but that's where walking comes in. I can't walk too fast because I don't want to stumble. <laughs> I don't want to hurt this arm. But anyway, this tweaking is going on in the house and I can't really figure out where it's from. Um, Kenny's going to try to come sometime 
this week. Thank God it's not constant because I would lose my mind. It doesn't seem to bother Joe Anna, my roommate, but it's her birthday this weekend. And, you know, she's going to be busy, but I think next weekend I'm, uh, for her gift, I'm going to show her how to make. I'm going to get all the fixings for chicken and dumplings, and she loved them, and show her how to make them. So, yeah. Thank God that's going really well. I'm really comfortable. And, you know, it's hard with Clara with the cat. I think if she felt better, but she doesn't. And, you know, I'm pretty sure Moira comes around and eats food and, you know, being a cat. And she's a young cat. She loves to go downstairs. And, but yeah, she can sneak up once Clara, you know, once she gets down nap, I, I told her no more food right now. I can't afford to keep feeding her, but you know, for your near the end of your life, you want to eat good, you want to eat food. So, um, yeah, but the snow's pretty. I got my snow shovels out. I just need to bring one in the house for front. I have one for the deck and then one by the garage. So I do that. And what I do now is I do one thing at a time. Like I do, I go downstairs, like I'll put my groceries downstairs so I can bring them up one at a time. And then, um, same thing with, I'm not trying to bring so much to work. I made my backpack lighter. And then I put, like, drinks are heavy. Like, this thing and then a big thing of water are heavy. Um, and then whatever I'm eating that day. But I put it downstairs um, and then pull my car around. Reminds me right now, my car is full of cardboard boxes that I took out from the downstairs out. I need to put it in the, um, there are small ones. So I want to use them for vet stuff. But I think what I'm going to do, I'm off um, the weekend after Thanksgiving. So I, um, I really feel the need to let more stuff go, right? I have a whole bunch of Christmas going. I have, I'm going to go through more clothes and try to come up with 20 more things. That'll be 40 things. That will be good. Because when the next two weeks, when I call them the next time to pick up, I'm going to be done, you know, until after, depending on when everything's going to happen. Um, but, you know, I can still have a place where I keep stuff until I'm ready to do that. Or I could get someone to help me, too. But I have to change thinking gears. But my room right now is not great. I have piles of clothes to hang up. So I did one load of laundry, and I thought, you know what, we need to just get every, because it's actually hard to hang hangers and it's really hard to um fold jeans and stuff you just don't realize how much two hands god forbid i need to change my sheets i mean yeah crazy so yeah you don't really appreciate things so they're not working so that's the state of the union as it were, um, and then I'm gonna try, it's just, if I get, if I'm not getting up early enough and then I'm trying to get stuff done in the morning, plus, you know, I have to maintain my first, my main floor and the foyer and the washer area, all that, because I share it. Now, right now, my cupboard is a little messy. I'm gonna make quiche and then I'm going through a bunch of tea. That's fine, she, and she really doesn't care. She's not picky like that, which is so nice, but matters to me. So, like I said, I'm, I've just, you know, I've had some art supplies up. I was going to use my sewing machine. I can't, I don't know if I'm not threading it right. But I thought, you know what, Let's, we're going to put that away right now. We're going to, you know, and I want to, so my library has been just stuff everywhere. And I can't have that. So, one of the things I have to do is pick up anywhere where I could trip, right? Um... So I've been working on that. And really it's just about, um, <clears throat> I had this rolling rack that was small from the garage that was gonna give away and I thought it's light. I thought it's gonna fit in this perfect spot between the refrigerator and this door. <clears throat> so, and it did. I pretty shouldn't have done it by myself, but I managed to do it because <clears throat> it was light. But I have all my empties right there now. And what I'm gonna do is take from there. And then what I'm gonna do is I have some cookie baking stuff, stuff like that. That's like on the bottom thing. So then I know where it is and that frees up room in my studio. Um, and uh, fill that up and then have that empty and then store things there. So, but right now I'm just going through paper and doing a rough sort. And then I have um, just a box that I just toss stuff in for the food bank, not the food bank, I wish. Um, 
for the vets, like even stickers or I'm going through postcards. I'm not getting, I'm trying not to get too stuck in the minutia because my goal is to have everything up. And that's, you know, that's actually sorting through paper and stuff, something I can do when I'm recuperating. Um, so yeah, but it's actually, I got, I've gotten a lot done this week. Um, I'm going to take it easy today. Um, I might go down just do a little bit cause it's actually kind of fun. But I have to work Saturday, Sunday, and Monday because I took off Tuesday for my doctor's appointment because I'm just burning through leave. So I'm going to do that. Um, and I have a few things to return, and I might have missed days. I have to check on it. I My goal is to get it all put together today and, I don't know, try to do it after work or Monday morning or something. And what I can return, I can, and what I can't, I'll donate. And, you know, not ordering anything right now. I do want an aromatherapy thing. Uh, mine broke. It was a really good one. Because I do feel like there's an odor of cat pee. I can't smell well. I just, the thought of it makes me crazy. So I'd like to have something in the kitchen. And you have to be careful because a lot of stuff is toxic for cats. Um, but bur there's a few. Frankincense and um, some strange ones. That's fine. I just want my house to have a general better smell. And there's like, I got one of these like things from the Dollar Tree. I can't even smell it really, but they're toxic. So I threw that out. And I want to do some art stuff. There's this thing where you take packing paper, like the manila, and you use a wax and it becomes, so that's kind of cool um, and messy. And so I have to set that up. And one of my comforts, I don't know why is, hold on, let me get it. So one of my comforts, and I can't explain it, there's probably some explanation somewhere. As you know, I like to coffee stain and this is tea staining, right? So I try just, um, I haven't ironed them yet, but um, I just, I can't describe to you. I couldn't find them, I put them somewhere and I was just like, where, I don't like to touch them. I have, I mean, I, so they were normally white. You know, like that. But anyway, get that vintage thing. And it's so serendipitous, you know. I love that. So this makes me happy. And um, I don't know, I might make a draw. I don't know what I'm going to do. But, um, and uh, what's this? This one thing is really cool. Like this is a little bit, I don't know how what that was, but it was from the thing I was putting them on. I couldn't find them because I just like to touch them. But I feel like I'm going to taste saying some stuff today. But um, when I know, like, really when I'm off course is, like, I've been having a lot of negative self-talk. And especially art, I just kind of, I'm like, you know, like, judging myself and don't know what to do. And, you know, trying to work on something specific. And I thought, okay, number one, don't be mean to yourself. Of course, you're artistic. Of course, you have value when it comes to art. But it's pretty reckless, it's pretty mean what's coming in. So that's why I'm listening to like Louise Hay and all these people who tell you how amazing you are. So my brain can hear that. But uh, so I thought, you know what, let's just do this. I might do some stamping and I was trying to work on some Christmas stuff, but you know, I could do something like this that can be put in books. I don't know, you know, just junk, just literally throwing stuff down that makes no rhyme or reason and warm myself up again. Cause that's when I know I'm in a really bad place is when my self-talk when I'm creating is really just vicious. And of course I spent most of my life with that. So it's been the last couple of years where I've come to an understanding of that voice and, and, you know, and deep diving and all that stuff, but it's still, you know, when you feel vulnerable and you're depressed and tired and, you know, and just trying to figure everything out, it, it sneaks in, right? And um, I don't know if I can ever kill the voice or send it off on a world cruise for the rest of you know my life, but um, it's just something I have to deal with. But I am aware of it and it doesn't feel good. It feels terrible. And, and that in some sense is good. I'm not numb to it. I don't just go, oh, whatever. No, it, shock, it stops me. And I'm like, what, what? But at the same time, I still have this angst about it's creating, so, which is awful. So I thought, you know what? We're not going to bitch about this and moan and get depressed about it. Let's, let's tea stain paper. Let's find things. Let's do some envelopes, you know, and then you can, the goal is to just make the worst stuff ever, right? And just, you know, if I still feel like doing like Christmas, I don't know. Um, but I have these journals and I was trying to sew them to get this 
pages together and then my sewing machine wasn't cooperating. It was just like a hot mess. I'm like, let's regroup and let's just take paper and throw collage on it or just paint colors. Just absolutely no rhyme or reason. As a matter of fact, if it starts to look like something, you need to kill it, right? There's a title of a book, I think, or maybe it's a um, chapter, but I think it's a book. It said, kill your darlings. We have a little thing about writing out a display. It's like, kill your darlings. So that works with everything, right? When that's something that becomes so precious. Um, but yeah. Then I wanted to share this book with you and then I'm gonna go. Um, it's called Drawn Testimony, My Four Decades as a Courtroom Sketch Artist by Jane Rosenberg. It's so interesting, you guys. And I love stuff about, I love memoirs, biographies, all that kind of stuff. It just, it's so interesting to learn about how she ended up. She's kind of like the courtroom sketch artist because you know, federal um, courts do not allow photography or recording or anything. So they have to use this. And she starts off with Ghislaine Maxwell as her first, um, I mean, she starts off about her art and her parents and how, and her, her debt, you know, her journey to get to this spot. I'm gonna let you read that, but um, she said there's a, um, a Ghislaine uh, that she was always looking and she actually started drawing her, the artist. And, um, but let me show you some, I'm not too far in it, but I'm also trying to train myself to read to get back in the habit, because I love reading, and I feel bereft when I don't read, and it's been a while. It's been a while, and um, so I'm like, let's just, this just fascinated me. And I got, I'm checking out a couple of like happy Christmas books, and you know, and I'm gonna watch Hallmark movies or whatever I can find for free on Roku. Um, but this is her thing, this is what she takes with her in the court. She made this like when she was 18, 19, 20, <clears throat> and she still uses it today. And she said she uses the pastels because they give her the most um, expression on people. Uh, <clears throat> let me find a really good one. Like, look at this. Look at Don King. Isn't that amazing? And she, um, <clears throat> she said, this is Woody Allen and Mia Farrow. And she said it was easier to do Woody Allen than Mia Farrow's good looks. Isn't that interesting? But, and what happens is it's not like she can go home and refine it. <clears throat> she has to like, within like 30 minutes, have it uploaded so they can put it out, right? But um, she's just, but let me show you. Her drawing was the first one to ever be on the cover of The New Yorker. Um, they've never had like a, that kind of thing done before. Anyway, and um, yeah, so it's just lovely. There's where she is. I can't believe this is new. That's a terrible. That's a that's a terrible way. That's cheap. They should the company should have put underneath. But that's her. Again, it's Jane Rosenberg, John Testimony, and it's fascinating. And um, I'm gonna spend some time reading today. But yeah, so I'm gonna, I might do a little short or real on that. Um, Cause I gotta get, I just, you know, I would, I don't have to do anything, right? I would like to, you know, get some more stuff out and get some of the stuff in my archives out to you guys. But, um, and you know, I'm really gonna um, try to get caught up with all my comments. Cause I love it. Um, it's just, I'm protecting my hands, but I'm, so I can do that. But yeah, it's, um, and I gotta make food. That's important to have healthy food. And I've been having, um, I love those Icelandic skr. I don't know how you say it, S-K-Y-R. Might be just sky, actually. Might not, the R might, I have to Google that and see how you pronounce it. But they're really good. They're high protein and they're, um, you know, there's not a lot of sh the sugar, but not a lot. And I actually love them. And I cut up apple and make a whole thing up with them. So I've been having that, but I need some more protein to eat at work during the day. I'm just not eating enough protein and I'm not eating enough even though I'm not eating junk, I'm not eating enough. So, and I want to heal. So, um, I'm, if I have the energy later, I'm going to try to call my insurance and find out about how can I get a nutritionist, which has been on my list for months, but it's just a lot, you know, and having portals and I've done a lot. Right. And I told you, um, so my colonoscopy, 
is fine, but I have stomach polyps, which is typical for people who've had my surgery and have to take acid um, reflux things. But I, um, I have an appointment with her in December to talk about it because it's con it's just concerning to me. Like, well, I have so much one day, I can't get food in. I mean, I just have all kinds of questions. And also, I'm going to need pain medicine and probably narcotics for a little bit. I hate them. They make you feel so terrible, but they're necessary because being in pain does not, it makes you not heal. So I want to talk to her about like, how do we do that? Like, how, what's the safest way? Luckily, I've barely my whole life, have, I, I, I can only take Tylenol and I've barely used it that much. I mean, I take occasionally and like, I did have some like really strong for my um, teeth. But what I did is I took a third of it, right? And I know she said before, like, have a yogurt, have a milk, have something to help protect your stomach while you're having it. So there are ways to do it. Um, but I want to get that information, right? So, but, you know, just all of these phone calls and you have to go here and get an MRI and come here. And then doing like PT twice a week. It's just been a lot. So, and at work, it's just commotion-y and it's just really too hard. And, you know, to, I have to find somewhere to go to make all these phone calls during my break. So, um... Yeah, and my brain is just tired. It's just like, oh, really? But I, I do, like, I need to see my ENT. I need to make an appointment to get this tooth that's pulled out and a cap put in. And I know about all the other teeth. Um, I really need a hearing aid, or at least one. And I need to call the insurance and find out, what do I do? You know, can I go anywhere? That kind of thing. But my hearing is definitely not. It's, it's getting worse, I feel. I find myself having people repeat a lot people who I used to not have to ask to repeat. And you know, that's not good for your brain. So it's just a lot, a lot, but I'm lucky I have amazing health insurance, all things said and done. So I was talking to a customer um, and she had been sharing um, stuff about like her PT and all that. And I, she's like, well, what, what happened with the MRI? And I said, oh, I have to have probably a shoulder replacement. And then she gave me the name of who's the best shoulder guy in the area. And he's like top five in the country. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to get a second opinion. So I call, leave a message, they get right back to me, and um, I have to have Medicaid or this other insurance or it's out of pocket. So you have to be very wealthy or old. And I am neither. So anyway, I tried, and, um, you know, I researched the man I'm going to, and, you know, it all looks good. And, you know, I know they want to probably, but Joanna knows a lot about this stuff, and she said, if you're not in agony and you can push it back a little bit and do PT and get, you know, what you can stronger. And my PT people are excellent because let me tell you, they knew me at least something had changed. And we're like, right away, because I would, based on pain level, I would have never gone. So they were amazing. Um, I'm not going right now until I see my, until I see this new doctor and he described, you know, and he, you know, we talk about everything, but I would. I mean, I know I have to do it at some point because I do not want to live in agony or, you know, I don't want to wake up. I'm going to ask actually to some strong pain medicine in case that does happen. And I don't want to rush into any kind of surgery. So it's a, it's going to get the facts and, and think about it. And, um, you know, I'm thinking not till the new year. Winter would be a good time, right? To stay home and, um, you know, I got to be careful about walking. And, I mean, just it's the thing. It's a thing, but I'm thankful for you guys and people have reached out on me on Instagram. Thank you. I, I'm on there sometimes, but I don't even look at any comment. I mean, it's just right now I'm just looking for art that, you know, I have these classes. I can tune into them too, but I'm looking for art that's messy, right? But even that is just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I want. And then I was thinking about going somewhere really good and getting my hair cut super short and have some color thrown in it because really washing my hair is hard. Um, I'm sure for the first week or two, well, like one of my friends too from my mom's recipe box and Mark is the one that's going with me to my appointment. She's like, girl, I'll come wash your hair. So I know stuff like that, right? Um, for sure. And I'm sure I'm in, maybe entitled to someone coming in um, kind of thing. So, I, you know, it's just a lot, but I don't want to do anything till I hear from the doctor and get a, a feel. And also, I just got like a $1,200 bill. I mean, I pay my copay. I shouldn't have this bill and it doesn't look like any insurance. So I need to find out. I, I was going to call insurance today about, I have all these alarms set. But let me talk to them and see what they say before I call my insurance and start flipping out.
So, um, and then that reminded me too, like when I do and get pre-approved for the surgery and do all that whenever it happens. Because I don't want any sudden, oh, this or that, and then you have a huge bill. So I'm gonna try to be smart about it. But at the other hand, like Claire said, just let your hair grow out and don't worry about it. So, I mean, you know, I was thinking about maybe I can just go get a trim, but um, you know, I don't know y'all. I don't know. This is my new headband from Dollar Tree. I love it. It is so cute and it feels really good on my head. But who cares about hair, right? I do. It makes me feel better, but okay. So yeah, I'll be back and I'm gonna, like we said, we're gonna make borscht and um, I'm just gonna cook up some salmon and have that as my snack. And it really is true when you're not, and I haven't been to Trader Joe's, I would like to, I don't know now if I can go before Thanksgiving now that I think about it. Holy crap, right? I can't believe Thanksgiving's next week. I'm gonna wait, cause I don't need any of that stuff. I'm gonna wait and um, go the weekend after Thanksgiving, I think, cause, um, but you know, not buying like a lot of processed stuff. I do, what I am gonna do though, is do um, a bunch of their frozen foods that are not toxic and I, I love and just have them at work. So I don't have to carry a lot of food with me to work. So it's kind of a toss up. But there's a couple of new things I wanna try. And y'all, I'm no matter what, I'm getting some of that peppermint ice cream, Jojo stuff. One thing of it, I love that stuff. Um, and you know, I uh, Wegmans has a lot of different peppermint ice cream stuff and so does Whole Foods, cause I'm like a hound on this, but you know. But you know, not eating a bunch of junk helps. Um, like last night I came home, I did have, I was craving beans and I had some, um, I did have a can of beans and then I defrosted hamburger in the microwave and I whipped up some hamburger and mixed it all together. So I, it's, we, I make this recipe called Nan's Beans. There's like a cheap version of Nan's Beans. But I also threw in a thing of butter beans and, you know, to get more um, stuff in it. Um, and matter of fact, that's what I'm having for lunch. Everything in my head says you should go treat yourself to some bad food and I'm like, it's expensive and why would you want to do it? Well, then go get good, good food. It's just constant battle. I'm so tired of it. I really, truly get sick of it. And I just pray that it's lifted from me, you know? Um, but yeah, so it is, gosh, I'm not ready. I hope we don't have any ice and stuff. Um, yeah, but it's amazing how you can adapt and do things, but you guys, my comfort envelope. I don't know, it's tax, I don't know what it is. You know what, sometimes you just don't need to know. You need to enjoy and go to what it is that is giving you some kind of peace or happiness or something. So, all right guys, I'm gonna go and um, I am actually gonna try to upload this before I have my phone call appointment. Like I said, we'll do grocery haul and I'm gonna throw all the borscht stuff in the crock pot. But I was reading somewhere where this woman takes the meat, the puts it in foil, seasons it, and then puts it in the oven for like 45 minutes. So I, my meat always seasons up, but I think I might try that. Um, because I have other things to eat. You know, the borscht can be for the weekend, but you know, when you're working three days in a row, I wanna do that. And then I'm getting spinach and make some um, quiche. I eat that all the time now, it's lovely. I can, you know, put tons of vegetables in it. And it's a good way to, <coughs> excuse me, use up my vegetables. I do have to get some more cheese soon. Um, but that, when I go to Trader Joe's, I'll do that. Um, I have enough cheese to get me through, but yeah, my, um, maybe before I start my grocery haul, I'll show you how empty my refrigerator is. My freezer just seems apparently never to go down. Never. I, I don't know what to say about it at this point, but I also am treating myself to a good a hunk of bread to go with my yummy borscht. So Anyway, thank you guys. I appreciate it. I hope you're well and let me know in the comments and I'm going to start with the most current and work my way back. And um, I'm not going to talk about true crime, but stuff's going on. I did watch the Susan Smith Pearl hearing with one of my favorite YouTubers, Grizzly True Crime. And what a, you know, I remember that Susan Smith thing, but of course her parole is denied. You just don't kill your children and have the, a manhunt for someone that didn't exist for nine days and get out of prison in 30 years. So it's very emotional and um, sad, but I don't know what it is about that either. But really now I'm watching people do art and um, I'm going to be looking for feel good movies. And I won't sit there and think, well, I want to be in a Hallmark movie. I want my 
you know, meet my man who comes in to fix something, and, you know, and he's raising his niece and nephew. <laughs> but I'm just going to enjoy him. Plus, I love the clothes, and I love the location, and I love, like, the decor, and everything is, you know, that's what I'm going to do. Don't judge me, y'all. Don't judge me. I'm going to do what I have to to keep my flipping sanity. And there's part of me, I'm going to fight. I want my life, I want quality of life, right? And I've been on this track, you know, it's just a major hurdle. But in some ways it's good because I'm involved in this process and, you know, and I'm on it and I'm not one for letting things go. Do you know my brother? Okay, I got, you know, I had a big fall in the pandemic where I wasn't getting my teeth, but I basically have had my teeth cleaned for twice a year forever and dealt with anything right away. My brother, I'm not kidding, has not been to the dentist in 10 years. I told him, don't tell people that. But he went, not one thing wrong with him. No, barely any tartar, uh, no cavity, doesn't need two teeth pulled and implants like I have to. I mean, honestly, that is not fair. But I think he has my mom's genetics and I have my dad's for that. But And even, I was looking at my teeth and you guys, I drink coffee and tea. And I've tried whitening them at home, but it hurts my gums, it makes my teeth hurt. And I'm like, Tracy, are you really going to hurt yourself so your teeth look whiter? I told Beverly, I'm ready just to yank everything out and get veneers, but um, I'm not going to do that either. I don't have the cash for that, but... It's just, yeah, it's, it's interesting these things that show up that, yeah, I do have vanity, I do have ego, and I do want to look a, a certain way and, you know, all that stuff. But I do think of myself as under construction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, hopefully heading into my 60s and, you know, I'm getting all these things done and being responsible and I can only do what I can do. But, you know, it's the choices you make every single day. Like, I'm very proud of my grocery order. Um, one, I don't want to spend any extra money because it's so expensive, but if you're not buying like packaged things and you can't afford really good salmon or good steak, that kind of thing. Oh, and I'm obsessed with meatloaf for some reason. You couldn't have paid me to eat meatloaf most of my life, which is vile, but now I'm obsessed with it. I had some at Aldi that was really good and I've never found it again. And Joanna shops at Aldi, so she's constantly looking for it. And she's like, I swear I look for it. But whenever I'm near Staples that I have to go to to return stuff, I pop into all these and I haven't found it either. But it's probably toxic at the end. Of no, I think that one wasn't toxic. I'm going to make my own. So there's a hamburger mix with, um, I, they never fulfill it. But if not, I have hamburger. I'm just going to make my own because I got some from Safeway and it was vile. So I want to make meatloaf. Probably not today. I'll probably do that Tuesday. And um, yeah. I want to get some good soups going. Beverly made a lovely soup and I've been, I had a couple of days of just having chicken vegetable soup. It's such a good way to get your vegetables in and feel warm and full. And then yesterday we had a party and someone made this really good. It was like a, she's Iranian, but it was like a barley, a light barley soup and um, lemon. It was a lemon flavor. Oh my God, you guys. So good. But all right, I'm going to get going, get myself together, um, get ready for my appointment with my, uh, my drug man and move on from there. So you take care. And um, those of you who are still here, I really appreciate it. And I know, um, you know, I follow people. I don't want them to disappear and I worry about them. And, um, but I also know sometimes it's just, I don't, I know you don't mind me complaining and sharing hard things. I know you, sometimes I just don't even want to hear myself talk about it. <laughs> you know, I just want to go on like autopilot and here, it's very honest for me and I learned a lot about myself actually through this and um, so I thought you need to go back to that that's important to you and it helps you clarify and um, you know being and you know the thing with Clara needs support it's just really hard it sucks and it's not the last thing I have with my mother obviously I have a niece and nephew but um, yeah it's just she was my mom's cat right so that is the lay of the land. And um, anyway, I love you guys. I appreciate you. And if you're new, I'm, hey, welcome. <laughs> and um, yeah, the ADHD thing's real. And I just get sick of even thinking about it, honestly. Just try to do my best every day. And um, when I can't, go to bed. So, all right, guys. Take care. Bye. <laughs>